in this sequence in our study of the Gospel of Matthew, we are going to be looking at chapter 5 and verses 31 to 32 of the Gospel of Matthew. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a writ of dismissal. But I say this to you, everyone who divorces his wife, except for the case of an illicit marriage, makes her an adulteress, and anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The New Jerusalem Bible. One of the things you have to learn if you are not going to be too disappointed in life is to learn to have realistic expectations. Take as an example, you want to buy a new car. You look out there and you see that there are cars called BMWs and they have within them a Series 6 automobile. Now, if you have the money to buy one of these, well, you will not be disappointed. It is a premium automobile that you can approach with high expectations. It will have a level of performance, comfort, and refinement that one could and should expect at that price point. If I like this vehicle and have the money to buy it, I could then turn and rationalize and say to myself, you know what, I deserve the car, I have the money for the car, but what if I take some of that purchase price and free it up to put investment in stocks? I have a buddy over here who can give me some line on some up and coming stocks, maybe invest them in and take care of my future. Well, you can do that. So you, instead of buying a BMW 6 Series car, you go, you know what? Here's this 10-year-old Plymouth Grand Caravan. It will do the job of getting me around the city, getting me back and forth to work. Now, that's not a problem at all in terms of things. It's kind of prudent and wise. But what happens if I come to that Plymouth Grand Caravan with the same sort of expectations I would have had with the BMW 6 Series car? What I can expect when I approach my 10-year-old car is that there might be a few stains on the carpet. Not too sure where those stains came from. Maybe don't want to know. There might be a cigarette burn hole in one of the seats up front. Come July, I might find the cooling system in the cabin doesn't really work. I could turn around and say, you know what? The engine, eh, it works okay, but it just simply doesn't have the that oomph when I need it and press the gas pedal to the floor. You see, that new car might be, as it were, okay, but if I come to it with the expectations I would have had with a BMW 6 Series car, I am going to be disappointed time and time again. One of the great problems we have in North America is un realistic expectations. I will not qualify those last words just yet. You see, when you look at one of our problems, it is that we have set of, have a set of expectations for life that is not real. Take one area and you can see how this poisons things. The ideal in our culture is a large house, maybe two, maybe three cars, and a couple of really nice vacations a year. Now, are any of these things wrong in of themselves? The problem is not with the individual items. The problem is when we come to see life as defined by these things. You see, in order to achieve these things, you will need a certain level of income. There are individuals who are in a job or profession that might provide the income that it could afford these things and make it accessible. The problem is that there are many people who want these sort of things, but do not have the income to achieve it. In fact, there are married couples who want this and their combined income cannot achieve this. The danger is that our high expectations change our view of work from a way of making a living to a way of achieving a lifestyle. That's the problem of high expectations. It puts an unrealistic set of expectations on life 
and what we will do. If we look at North America, we have a marriage crisis. Notice I did not say we have a divorce crisis. Our pursuit of the good life definitely puts a stress on a number of marriages. In some cases, people would be advised to lower their material expectations from life. The sense of great expectation is not just limited to the material world. We have great expectations when it comes to our marriages. In fact, we could say we have unrealistic expectations. The older you get, the more you have an affinity with a 10-year-old grand caravan than a brand new BMW 6 Series automobile. Bad analogy, but same principle. If you have BMW expectations, but own a used Grand Caravan, you will be disappointed. We as Christians must be realistic about what marriage brings into our lives. We are all sinners in need of grace. All marriage partners fall short of great expectations. And you know what? That is okay. Divorces are a necessary evil in this world. There are some marriages that cannot be saved. I think Jesus in these verses was addressing what he saw in his culture. In his culture and ours, there was and is a flippant attitude towards marriage. The tragedy is we will never be free of that attitude and mindset when it comes to divorce. If we are to restore the sanctimony of marriage, in the church, we must reset our expectations about marriage. A marriage is a committed relationship which provides companionship and comfort through the ebb and flow of life. It is the union of two very flawed individuals who must understand the need of God's grace in all areas of life. It is not a relationship where I find self-fulfillment, but a place of service and ministry. So the key to a healthy, productive marriage is realistic expectation.